Today we, along with millions of people across the world, gather on what is called Remembrance Sunday, a day when we pause, we reflect, and we pray. A day that first came into existence in November 1919, as a world still reeling from the trauma and carnage of the First World War, chose to stand in silence to remember those who gave their last full measure of devotion so that we would live freely. In this chapel this morning, we solemnly remember the old boys of Hilton College as well as the staff of Hilton College who left these beautiful grounds and died in battle. And at the same time, we recommit ourselves to be keepers of the dream of the kingdom of God, a kingdom of peace and justice, and a kingdom of freedom from want for all. Let us pray. Father God, we pray for all those who suffer as a result of conflict and ask that God may give us peace for the servicemen and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God, and may God give them and us peace. O God of truth and justice and love, we hold before you those whose memories we cherish and those whose names we will never know Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honor the past, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. The reading is from the prophet Micah. Chapter 4. In the days to come, the mountains of the temple of Yahweh will be put on top of the mountains and be lifted higher than the hills. The people will stream to it. Nations without number will come to it, and they will say, Come, let us go to the mountain of Yahweh, to the temple of the God of Jacob, so that he may teach us his ways, and we may walk in his paths. Since from Zion the law will go out, and the oracle of Yahweh from Jerusalem, he will yield authority over many peoples and arbitrate for mighty nations. They will hammer their swords into plowshares, their spears into circles. Nation will not lift sword against nation, there will be no more training for war. Each man will sit under his vine and his fig tree with no one to trouble him. The mouth of Yahweh Spokoa has spoken it. Please will you stand.
Anglo Zulu War of 1879. Jay White Law. South African War, 1899 to 1902. <coughs> B. M. Bowen. G. F. Chapman. P. E. Erasmus. C. J. Hamilton. W. Murray. E. H. Shaw. F. W. Taunton. Bambata Uprising, 1906. V. J. W. Christopher. World War I, 1914 to 1918. A.C. Addison, E.C. Addison, H. Addison, N.G. Addison, J.W.F. Andrews, The Urban B. Armstrong, C.L. Baldwin, H.V. Barrett, E.E. E. Baisley, G. Benningfield, M. Bevis, H. R. Blanksby, A. Booth, T. W. Budewald, W. T. Burgess, C. Carmichael, T. L. Chippe, J. A. Chazari, B. Collins, F. E. Dacob, A. I. Davis, R. K. Dooley, G. E. Driver, CLA Duff, FL Dunwell, DB Evans, AL Fitzpatrick, WV Fourth, WJ Gray, PR Greenow, FC Hawkins, HC Hawkins, JH Henderson, EH Island, FT Janion, FD Jones, CE King, T Leslie, OT Mason, KA McLaughlin, HV Mills, E.C. Murdoch, O.H. Nicholson, W.A.M. Neven, J. Onslow Carlton, J.H. Poole, T.H. Porritt, J.R. Saunders, N.R. Sturgeon, T.W. Sutton, J.A. Mortison, F.H.H. Williams. World War II, 1939-1945. B.G. Alexander, C.D. Anderson, I.N. Archibald. N. H. Atwell, D. K. Austin, C. W. Ballenden, C. M. Barker, D. J. Bay Siegel, M. C. Mulock Bentley, B. C. Bond, P. M. Bone, T. W. Boyd, H. P. F. Boyer, D. R. Brown, A. U. M. Campbell, F. R. Campbell, J. W. Capstick, L.F. Hinton Catherine, R.E. Chaplin. D.A. Chaplin, H.D. Cherrington, R.W. Cherrington, H.A. Chilvers, J.A. Clover, A.C. Craig, H.T. Crotus, R.E. Depp, D.B. Dick, J. Donaldson, B.J. Eaton, 
R Edwards, A C Essery, L V Essery, L V Et Ellen, A J D Ford, G H Frost. O Frost, G A Giles, J T Glass, H R Goodman, H A Gray, G R Guy, E W Hall, N M Hall. M. C. Hopkins, E. H. Horton, R. K. Howden, H. P. Judwin, J. R. Lacey, C. O. Luz, N. M. McKechney, R. S. McLaughlin, D. G. G. McLeod, B. K. Minnie, A. R. Merrick, A. B. Midgley, R. R. Midgley. J D M Moxham, H C Merman, F D Newmarch, Sinjin E Nylon, H V Otto, J M Patterson, W F Fulpot, J H G Phipps, D A Platt, J B Pyatt, D Runert, D W T Robbins. H A Robinson, G A Roy. P. E. Saunders, S. R. C. Saunders, M. S. Slatter, S. O. Solomon, N. J. Stanford, R. K. Stone, W. G. R. Sutherland, G. C. Sutton, T. C. M. Tabera, A. S. Thompson, A. J. C. Walker, A. B. Webster, L. R. Webster, Korean War, 1950-1953. GCX Merriman, Northern Ireland, 1969 to 2001. ID Cordon Lloyd, South African Border War, 1966 to 1990. KF Began, T Chadwick, CJ Robin. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Please be seated. World War I, also known as the Great War, or the War to End All Wars, was a conflict, as we know, which raged from 1914 to 1918 and saw the mobilization of 70 million military personnel from around the world. The current population of South Africa is close to 58 million. So we're talking about a group of people larger than the population of our country now, let alone at that time. At the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918, the ceasefire came into effect, a date and time forever linked with the end of the war. In February 1918, while the world was still struggling under this conflict, another war unleashed itself upon the world, this time a biological war, an H1N1 war, which lasted until April 1920, a pandemic which became known as the Spanish flu. This struck the world with devastating consequences, taking far more lives than the war itself. Estimates of the number of people who died in this pandemic vary between 17 and 50 million people. An estimated 500 million people were infected by this. Countries whose populations had already been devastated by the war were once again hit. There were four deadly waves of this pandemic. 
Conservative estimates of between 9 and 12 million dead and 15 and 20 million severely wounded are numbers generally accepted in relation to World War I. In reality, however, both these figures were probably much higher. Accurate records were not kept by some countries. Figures for individual countries could be compared to the population of that country to try and understand the effect on a population. Estimates for some countries suggest a loss of three to 4% of their entire population in that one war. Upwards of 76% of the Russian forces mobilized for that war became casualties. We know that the heaviest loss of life on a single day occurred on the 1st of July, 1916, during the Battle of the Somme, when the British Army suffered nearly 58,000 casualties in that single day. On average in World War I, there were approximately 6,000 people killed per day, and the average life expectancy of a soldier in the trenches was about six weeks. The expected lifespan of an airman in World War I was three weeks, but often much, much shorter than that. But what about the economic cost? In economic terms, World War I effectively triggered the greatest global depression of the 20th century. Once again, there are no totally accurate figures, but the following are got some good estimates in 1914 to 1918 US dollar terms. The US itself, $22 billion. The UK, $35 billion. South Africa, $300 million a total cost somewhere in the region of $125 billion. If we convert that into today's money for a comparison, we're probably looking at something in the region of $380 billion for the US alone. And remember, the US was effectively in World War I for a year and about seven months. After the war to end all wars, there was an optimism that such a conflict could not possibly happen again. This did not last for long, and an uneasiness began to spread in certain areas of Europe. In the first year of my degree, I took a course in linguistics and communication, and part of the course was spent studying the wartime speeches of Churchill, one of the greatest orators and communicators of all time. I recall him speaking about the conditions leading to the war, and speaking of an aching void where, quote, mighty forces were adrift. The void was open, and into that void, after a pause, there strode a maniac of ferocious genius, the repository and expression of the most virulent hatreds that have ever corroded the human breast, Corporal Hitler, unquote. He wasn't, of course, Corporal Hitler for long, and under his direction, the invasion of Poland by Germany on 1 September 1939 led to the next massive global conflict, World War II. Let us start with the economic impact of World War II. It is estimated that in current dollars, the cost to the US alone was in the region of $4 trillion. At the time, that was 36% of the gross domestic product of the country. It is estimated that in Britain alone, 30% of homes were destroyed in the war. Other, country, other countries were worse off. Poland had 30% of all buildings destroyed, 60% of schools and scientific institutions, 32% of its mines and electrical power facilities. Millions throughout Europe were rendered homeless. There were an estimated 21 million refugees, more than half of them displaced persons who had been deported from their homelands. In Japan, the damage to urban uh, centers was comparable to that in Germany. About 40% of the built-up areas of 66 Japanese cities was destroyed, and approximately 30% of the entire urban population of Japan lost their homes. As we know, Hiroshima and Nagasaki suffered the peculiar and lasting damage of atomic explosion and radiation. Casualties in World War II were also on an epic scale with estimates varying from 35 to 60 million. There are few accurate estimates of those wounded or permanently disabled. Once again, the heaviest losses were in Poland, 
with the country losing an estimated 20% of its entire population to that war. Life expectancy in World War II for a troop was better in World, I, World War I, if one can say such a thing, varying between three days and 33 months. A member of my own family, one of twins, was shot down and killed on his very first mission that he flew over France. So that was certainly less than three days. I read an article researching for this talk which spoke about 13 major US conflicts over time, and World War II remains the costliest of all time. Even if we look at the Iraq, Korean, Vietnam wars, these have cost far less in dollar terms than World War II, and the combined casualties were fewer. So where are we today with the cost of war? There are several ongoing global conflicts at the moment. Go and read about these all of which are having an impact on the world's population, whether that be human, economic, or other. We do, however, of course, have our own war this year, the war of COVID. This is very similar in so many ways to the war of the Spanish flu. We know very clearly the human cost of this pandemic, which has been immense, but fortunately, not of the same scale as either the Spanish flu or of the two world wars. We are, however, seeing too many broken families, families broken financially, socially, and mentally. The Asian Development Bank has put an estimate of $8 trillion as the eventual global cost of the COVID pandemic. We see daily the changing numbers, the increasing infection rates, the rising death toll. We thought we would have flattened the curve by now, but when one looks at the graphs globally, there is still a very long way to go. In our own country, I believe we are seeing some success in this regard, but we cannot become complacent. Countries in Europe particularly are being lashed with the second wave, a wave which has the potential to be far bigger and have far greater consequences than the first, with the virus already having claimed 1.2 million deaths with over 50 million people infected. We are considerably fortunate that medical technology has moved on since the early 20th century, and this will help limit the numbers to far fewer than the Spanish flu pandemic. There was a massive effort to end both world wars. We need to do the same at the moment. What are we all doing to try and stem the COVID war? What is the part we are playing? What are we doing to try and limit the further future impact? The world, and certainly our own country, cannot afford to have three or four waves of this pandemic. The only end to this war is social responsibility. We all need to do our part to ensure that we do not make this pandemic equal to the wars of the past. Comparisons might be odious, but history does have a strange way of repeating itself, and nature so often shows itself to be greater than the power of many humans. But at the same time, it always has the power to reset and restore itself. What people fail to do in a moment of crisis can, and often will, determine the fate of governments and nations forever. What are you going to do? Let us end with prayer. Eternal and loving God, save us from weak resignation to violence. Teach us that restraint is the highest expression of power, that thoughtfulness and tenderness are marks of the strong. Help us to love our enemies not by countenancing their sins, but by remembering our own. And may we never forget for a moment that they are fed by the same food, hurt by the same weapons, have children for whom they have the same high hopes as we do. Grant us the ability to find joy and strength, not in the strident call to arms, but rather 
to grasp our fellow creatures in striving for justice and truth and love. Now, my brothers and sisters, go forth from this place with renewed inspiration to do the work of God. Seek good, not evil. Love goodness and establish justice. This is the greatest offering we can make. Letting justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Go in peace with love for our neighbors. In the name of the Father and of his Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.